Welcome everybody to a one hour power yoga practice. My name is Tamara Maxim and this class is being taped live on Facebook, but if you'd like to catch the video at another time, you can check out my YouTube channel. It's Tamara Maxim and I have all my yoga videos there for free for you to use and share anytime you like. And there are even yoga videos for kids. So I hope if you have kids in your life or you know some people with kids, you can pass those on. And if you like some music for tonight's practice and you have Spotify, feel free to follow me on Spotify. It's under my name there, Tamara YBR, the area or airport code for Vancouver, Tamara YBR, and I have plenty of playlists. So feel free to check all that out if you like at another time. And for now, we'll get started with this practice. And tonight our practice will focus on the hands. And in yoga, we call the hand pasta. And they're really important for the foundation of many postures, particularly where we will be going in this practice. And if you practice with me before, you might have noticed that I've changed up the orientation a little bit because I'd like to have access to a wall. So if you want to set yourself up so you have access to a wall, that would be fantastic. And if you don't have a wall nearby your mat, you can always run away from the mat for a moment when I suggest it and find a wall for yourself. So take a moment to find a nice tall seat. You can sit onto your shin bones like I'm doing, or you can sit onto your seat or to a block, even take a block underneath your hips in a Virasana pose like I'm doing. And just take a few moments here to settle in. Feel free to close your eyes. So maybe place your hands on your thighs if you feel like you need a bit more grounding, have them face down or maybe your palms are facing up if you feel that you have extra energy to share or you'd like to receive some energy. And within the hands, you can also create a mudra. So maybe yam mudra, thumb and index finger touching, representing knowledge and wisdom that you have within you. Take a few deep clearing breaths, inhale through your nose. Sigh out your mouth. Two more like that, inhale. And exhale. Last one. Inhale. And exhale. And now keep that same breath, but keep the lips closed and start to find the ujjayi breath. This is a slower, deeper breath that creates a bit of a constriction in the throat so you have more control over the breath and you can meditate on that length of the breath as it comes in and out. Bring your attention to your mind's eye and find an intention for this practice. Maybe it's something you've been working on personally or something you'd like to work on in your yoga practice. They tend to weave in and around each other. And if you'd like, set a collective intention, something you'd like to give to the greater good, or maybe even a dedication for your practice. And choose from these intention cards that I like to use to create one more, offer one more intention for the practice tonight. So maybe you're practicing during the day. And this is perfect. The card is simplicity. So this is our extra intention if you'd like to think about it for your practice. Simplicity does not necessarily require renunciation. It can be basic, as basic as breaking down life's complications into smaller, more tasty and enjoyable bites. So for this practice today, I will be breaking down what can be considered a pretty complicated posture and bringing it into small size bites that might make it more enjoyable, more accessible for you. And that is the handstand. So we'll be using the hands a lot in this practice for the next hour or so. So really having appreciation for your hands, float them to your heart center. Bow your mind into the beautiful light of your own heart. Come back to your intentions, your dedication, and feel the press of your palms into one another. So when we activate the hands, it's one of the locks that we use in yoga, the bandhas, and this is hasta bandha. So see if you can create a little bit more energy by pressing your hands into each other, press the thumbs into the sternum, and then see if you can lift your heart up, draw the shoulders down the spine. Together from this place, Hastabandha, 
sitting up nice and tall. We'll open our practice with one beautiful sound of Om. So take a deep breath in and a full breath out. Inhale for Om. Oh. Let the vibration of Om radiate into your hands and out through your heart center in all directions. And bow in your mind in deep gratitude for all that you give to your practice every time you come to your mat. And blink your eyes open if they're closed. Release your hands back down into your thighs. We'll begin our practice today in standing so you can come right to the top of your mat. Stand somewhere near the top edge. With your feet either hip distance or big toes touching, make the outer edges of your feet parallel. On your inhale breath, sweep your arms up wide to the sky or Bahasasana and let the palms touch. See if you can arch back just a little bit, look to your thumb, press the hands together. Exhale, soften your knees, fold forward, Uttanasana, bring in the Ujjayi breath. Inhale, lengthen halfway, look forward. Exhale to fold again. Press your hands into the mat or to blocks and bring your forehead toward your shins. Press into your feet. Inhale to rise. Spread your hands wide. Reach for the sky. Press your palms into each other. Maybe arch back. Exhale. Fold forward again. Uttanasana all the way down. Press into the mat. Pull your forehead toward your shins. Inhale to rise all the way up. This time, press your palms up toward the sky as if you're pressing up to the ceiling. Take a big breath in here, reach up, press up. Hands come to the heart, fold all the way down. Inhale, halfway lift. And as you exhale, plant your palms down, step your right and left foot back, high plank pose. You're welcome to add in the hops if you like. Uttita Chaturanga Dandasana. See if you can rock your weight more forward onto the toes and get your shoulders right over top of your wrists and now find hasta bandha press your finger pads into the mat create a little doning under the knuckles feel free to lower your knees if you need keep the belly drawn in see if you can create more space right under the center of your hands and as you press down into the mat use the power of your hands pressing down to dome the space between your shoulders take one more inhale breath rock forward even more gaze forward and as you exhale, lower all the way down to the belly, untucking your toes when you get there. Now take your fingertips out wide off of your mat. You're creating a little dome underneath the hands and tip your elbows forward. Root the tops of your feet down. Try to bring your big toes to touch. As you inhale, lift your head and chest up. So feel the strength of your hands. Viparita Bhujangasana, exalted cobra. As you exhale, come straight back down. Again, press into the hands and use the power of your fingers to lift your heart up. This time as you exhale, dip your right shoulder down to the mat, look over your left elbow. Inhale, come all the way back up, lift your heart. Strong hands, exhale, left shoulder down, look over your right. Inhale, come all the way back up and feel the finger pads pressing down, lift your chest. Exhale, fold all the way down again. Slide your palms underneath your shoulders or grip into the mat. So find hasta banda. Tuck your toes, engage your legs. Draw the shoulders back. Maybe kneecaps are lifting. As you inhale, use the hands. Press the earth away from you as you rise back up high plank pose. Take another deep inhale here. And as you exhale, press the hands forward and down. Lift your hips back and up. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Now spread your fingers wide. Look at your hands. Find hasta banda. Press into your finger pads, pull your hips away from your wrist creases. Let the head hang down and look between your inner thighs. Take another deep inhale here, pull the hips back and up. Maybe your knees are soft. And as you exhale, try to straighten your legs, press your heels down. On your next inhale, look forward, grip the mat and take as many steps as you like, keeping your legs as straight as you can. Really press into your hands to come all the way forward. On your inhale breath, fingertips to the toes or palms to your shins, lift your heart, flat back, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold all the way, Uttanasana. Press into the mat and guide your forehead to your shins. 
Inhale to rise all the way up. And remember, you can always soften your knees. Bring your palms together to touch. Press into them as you arch back. Hands to your heart center. And let's start to move a little faster. Awareness of the hands with each breath. Inhale, reach up, arch back. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway, lengthen. As you exhale, step your left and right foot back. Utita Chaturanga Dandasan, high plank. Again, a couple of breaths here to really activate the hands. So press into your finger pads. Dome the space underneath your knuckles and see if you can create a little bit of lift in the center of your palms. Stay here, press into your hands, draw the belly in. Rock forward more and see if you can dome the space between your shoulders, so lift it up. Take one more inhale, rock forward more. As you exhale, slowly lower all the way down to your belly. Untuck your toes, slide your hands a little lower, find Hasta Bandha, press into the hands. On your inhale breath, guide your chest forward and up. This is Cobra Bhujangasana. Stay here or slide the chest more forward, lifting the thighs up off the mat. Now one more breath, press into the hands, lift your chest a little higher. Now you'll roll over the toes, make your way back to high plank pose. You can lower halfway, chaturanga, push back up, or go straight to downward dog, Adamukashvanasana. Your hands are so important in these postures to help keep you balanced and grounded. Take a deep inhale breath, root into your finger pads. Stay for the exhale, heels press down. And again, grip the mat strongly with your finger pads, lift your heels, keep your legs straight and take as many steps as you need to get to the top of your mat. Keep your legs really straight, press into the hands. On your inhale breath, lengthen chest, halfway up, look forward, flat back. Palms to the ground, push into your hands, fold into your shins. Inhale to rise all the way up. Now we'll do one breath per movement. Surya Namaskar A. Palms touch, arch back. Exhale, fold forward. Uttanasana, press into the hands, fold. Halfway lift, just on the fingertips or palms to shins, lengthen. As you exhale, plant your hands. Now grip the mat, walk, step or hop back to Chaturanga. Halfway push up. Once you get there, untuck your toes. Either Cobra or Dvamukhashvanasana, upward dog. And then make your way back to downward dog. Press into the hands, extra chaturanga if you like, using the strength. Push the earth away from you. Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward dog. Take an ujjayi breath in. And an ujjayi breath out. Inhale, come high on your toes. This time, bend your knees a lot. Look forward, walk, step, or hop, but press into the hands to give you that lift. Good. When you get there, halfway, look forward, flat back. Exhale and fold. Inhale to rise, press palms together, press into energize. Arch back or Vahastasana, hands to heart center, Samastitihi. Now touch your big toes together, heels slightly apart, letting the hips get low enough that you can sweep your index finger onto the mat behind you. And then curl your tailbone toward your heels so you're activating Mula Bandha, the root lock. Udiyana Bandha, the mid-abdominal lock, and then reach your arms up to the sky and magnetize your hands toward each other. Imagine you are holding a big ball in your hands and press into the ball. Draw the shoulders down the spine and uh, squeeze the inner thighs toward each other and try to pull the kneecaps back. Take one more inhale here, lift the chest and arms a little higher. Bend more deeply on the exhale. Now keep the belly in. One more breath. Reach up with your hands. Exhale, lift your hips and fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, lengthen, flat back, fingertips to the toes or palms to shins. As you exhale, plant your hands. Now grip the mat strongly with your finger pads. Feel that doming underneath the hands. Walk, step or hop back, but don't lose the connection with your hands. Meet in Chaturanga. You can feel how strong that foundation is. Come into Cobra Upward Dog. Again, press into the hands and pull your chest up. Roll back over the toes. Hands don't move. They're connected. Chaturanga. Push back up. Adho Mukha Svanasana. And all that time, the hands in one strong position. Let the crown of the head come down. Look between your inner thighs. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Ujjayi breath. Inhale your right leg up. 
So your hands are keeping your st you stable here. Bring your right knee to your right upper arm. Try to touch your upper arm if you can and rock forward on the back toes. Inhale, sweep your right leg up. As you exhale, cross your right knee to your left upper arm. Try to touch it. Use your hands to hold you stable. Inhale, sweep your right leg back up. Bring your knee to your chest. And now dome the upper spine. See if you can round even more by pressing your arm bones to straight. Take one more deep inhale. Bring your forehead to your knee. And as you exhale, step your right foot through inside of the right thumb. Back heel spins down. There's hip distance between your feet, your heels. And then reach your arms up to the sky. Bend your right knee a lot and pull your outer right hip back. See if you can get your right knee right over top of the ankle. As your outer right hip pulls back, your front thigh pushes forward and down. Magnetize your hands again as if they're pressing into a ball. Take a big inhale breath, reach up. And now as you exhale, float the hands to the lower back. Interlace your palms and get a nice tight grip. So close the hands tight. This is important because it's the power of the hands that helps us go deeper in the pose here. Pull the knuckles down toward the earth if you can. It's okay if you need to keep your elbows bent. Take an inhale, lift your chest. And as you exhale, start to bow forward over your front thigh, Baro Virabhadrasana. Let the head come down and the arms lift up if you can. Outer right hip back, left leg forward, crown of the head down, pull the hands away from you, press your knuckles up toward the sky. And this movement of pressing up toward the sky lets the head come down further. Take a deep breath in, pull your outer right hip back, deep breath out, maybe crown of the head touches down. Now use your hands to pull you all the way back up, reach to the sky, full breath in, Palms magnetize as you look up and maybe touch together. As you exhale, plant your palms down. Step your left toes back. Step your right leg back to float so that, again, the hands a strong foundation, chaturanga. Take your back bend. And make your way back. Aramukashvanasana. Push the earth away from you. Lift the hips high, heels toward the mat. Take a full ujjayi breath in and a full ujjayi breath out. Inhale, left leg lifts to the sky. Bring your left knee to your left upper arm. We're focusing so much on the simplicity of each of these movements. Cross to the right upper arm. If you're adding variations, that's great. Use the hands. Inhale, sweep back up. As you exhale, bring the knee to the chest. Now use the finger pads, press in. Dome the upper spine, bring your forehead to your knee. One more inhale here, belly strong. Step your left foot through inside your left thumb, back heel spins down and you rise. Virabhadrasana one. Magnetize those hands toward each other. Use that as a direction to pull your outer left hip back. Front of your right thigh coming forward. Bend that left knee so it's directly over the ankle. And really all of these simple pieces put together make these beautiful shapes with beautiful practice. Take another deep inhale here, reach up, maybe palms touch. Beautiful. One more inhale. And as you exhale, hands to the lower back again. This time, take the opposite grip. So grip without thinking about it. And then switch up the weaving of the fingers, opposite thumb on top to get that balance. Feel free to keep the elbows bent if you need or draw the knuckles down toward the earth, chest to the sky. Take a big breath in, heart lifts. As you exhale, bow forward, Baro Virabhadrasana. Let the shoulder rest on the thigh. Keep the outer left hip pulling back. Close your hands tight together like you have a precious jewel in your hands. Crown of the head comes down. Create space for the arms to lift up. And pull your hands up toward the ceiling to allow the crown to come further down like a teeter-totter. A deep breath in and a long breath out. And one more. Outer left hip back, right thigh forward. Breathe in and out. And now use your hands. Pull yourself all the way back up. Reach for the sky. Palms touch. Connect. Exhale. Plant your hands. Find Hasta Bandha. Strong foundation. Right foot steps back. Left foot floats. Chaturanga. 
Take your breath in as you find your back bend or Dva Mukha Svanasana or Pujangasana. Press into the hands, they stay gripping the mat. Chaturanga, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Deep breath in and a long breath out. Step your big toes together to touch. Look forward to the top of your mat. And this time you're going to walk your feet in just a little bit closer, maybe one or two steps. Maybe even walk your hands back just a little bit. Now find that strong foundation into your hands again, hasta banda, and start to rock forward so the shoulders come right over top of the wrist creases. And now you'll do the same thing, but as you come forward, you're going to come high on the toes. And now as you come back, Bend your knees out wide, hips to heels, and then come forward again, straight legs, shoulders forward, and come back into a little squat. And then from here, start to add in a couple of light hops as you come forward. You can keep your knees wide and kick your bum with your heels. Try to go for three. If you like, you can always move to a walk. And press into your strong hands. Straighten your arms. Beautiful. And then on the third or fourth hop, hop forward between your hands. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Find Utkatasana, chair pose again. Get your hips down. Reach your arms up to the sky. And from here, press your palms into each other. To feel that connection, hasta banda. Press your hands into one another the best you can. Thumbs to the sternum. Lift your heart. Take an inhale, lean forward. Exhale, twist to the right side and pull your left knee and left hip back. Now from here, you can press flat palms into each other. You can make a fist. What I like to do is press my finger pads into each other and tent my hands and look over my right shoulder and this creates really strong finger. Take a deep breath in and a long breath out. And if you like for a breath, you can open your wings, open the chest, keep pulling your left hip and left knee back. Bend deeper. Beautiful. Come back through center. Lift your hips and fold. Press into your hands. Pull your forehead to your shins. Halfway lift. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Bend your knees again. Sit down into the chair. Reach those arms straight up. Magnetize your hands. And then pull them together at your heart. Find Hasta Banda here, so bring the palms together, thumbs to your sternum, lift your chest. As you exhale, twist to the right side or left side. Keep that connection of the palms, any of the variations. You can find flat palms, make a fist with one hand, or tend your fingertips as I like to do. Pull your outer right hip and right knee back, sit a little deeper. Create those strong hands, strong fingers, look over your left shoulder. Feel free to stay here or open your wings. As you inhale, come back to your center and lift your hips and fold. Press into the mat with your gripped hands, forehead to your shins. Halfway lift as you inhale. Press into your hands again. Float lightly back if you can or step lightly back. Chaturanga. Find your heart open. With your inhale breath, roll over the toes, strong hands, chaturanga if you like, and then Adho Mukha Svanasana, deep breath in, and a long breath out. Inhale, right leg lifts to the sky, right knee to right upper arm, go for a float if you like. Inhale, right leg lifts back up, right knee into the chest, and again, press into the palms. Especially the finger pads, dome the spine, forehead to your knees, lift up a higher. Look forward, step between the thumbs. Back heel spins down, rise up, warrior two. Take a full extension through your hands. Bend deeply as you exhale. And now press your palms away from each other, as if you're pressing two walls away from you. Bend deeply into that right knee and press the hands forward and back. Flex the wrists, and now switch. Draw the fingers toward you as you press the back of your hands away. Take a deep breath in, and a long breath out. Come back to center, flip your right palm up, left hand down. Viparita Virabhadrasa, an exalted warrior. Take an inhale here, one more exhale. 
As you inhale, come back through center, hinge forward. Find Uttita Parsva Konasana, extended side angle. You're welcome to stay here, forearm to thigh. Left fingertips reaching up and over. Turn your pinky finger down, thumb up to open the shoulder. Maybe you take your right hand to the mat or to a block. Try to go for a bind here to keep the shoulders open. Take the left hand behind to the sacrum. You can use a strap, a sock, or a towel. Right arm comes underneath. Try to find your fingers or your wrist or that strap. Turn your outer right hip underneath you, inner left thigh open and look up. Baddha Uttita Parsvokanasana bound, extended side angle. Take a deep breath in and a long breath out. Beautiful. And bind yourself. Come all the way back up, warrior two. Straighten your front leg, heel toe your back foot in just a little bit. Hinge forward over the front thigh and now find Trikonasana. Right fingertips inside or outside the right foot, maybe with a block. Left hand reaching straight up. Take a full deep inhale here and a strong exhale. Now let's use the core. Sweep your left arm over your ear, right palm magnetize toward the left. Again, as if you're holding a big ball, squeeze that ball, turn your heart open and look to the left. Take a deep breath in and a long breath out. Ardha Chandrasana Half Moon Pose. Left hand to your left hip. Maybe bring a block under your right hand. As you step forward onto your right foot, the left leg floats back behind you. Now active through both feet. Grip the mat with your right foot just as we've been doing with the hands. Press out through your left heel. Fingertips can rest on a block lightly. Maybe raise your left arm up and open up the chest. Maybe gaze up, maybe a japasana in your practice. Deep breath in and a long breath out. Beautiful, now soften your right knee. Bring both hands to the mat. Standing L-shaped pose. And this is the point where you might wanna to come to the wall. And I'll just demonstrate that by turning the wall. Standing L-shaped pose. Left leg is lifted. Right foot is down. Flatten your palms and start to swing that left leg up and down. And maybe you come high on your right toes as you do this. And over time with practice of the left leg swinging up and down, high on the right toes, maybe you get a little lift. And you can take a look here. Couple of leg hops. Ooh, that was a big hop. Maybe one more. Nice and light. Beautiful. And then come back to standing L shaped pose. Bring your left knee in toward your chest. Stand all the way up. Bring your knee with you. We'll do a little bit more to get the strength in the hands. Take your left knee out to the left, cross your ankle over your thigh, hands to your heart. Take an inhale again, hasta banda, lift the heart toward your thumbs. And as you exhale, sit back and down. Now you're welcome to stay here or to work into the hands. Hook the elbows in front of the shin bone and either hands to blocks or hands to the mat. And work into a grip of the hands so tight that you can start to lean forward and maybe the strength of the hands, the elbows bent, you can raise your right foot up and maybe even extend it back. Like a Padagalavasana, deep breath in, spine hasta bandha, deep breath out. And slowly coming back as you're ready, take your time. Stand all the way up, bring your knee with you. Whee! And all the way down, stand tall, take a full breath in and a full breath out. Let's find chair pose. Inhale, reach your arms up, sit your hips down. This time, hands to the heart center. Another hand and arm strengthener here. Bring your palms underneath your shoulders. Keep your big toes touching. Come high on your toes, just like we were doing to create a handstand. And then here, bend the elbows back, knees to the upper arms, lean forward, finding Kakasana Crow Pose. Maybe as you find Hastabandha, Press into your finger pads, dome the knuckles. See if you can dome the center of your palms, arch the back, look forward. Create a nice round spine. 
Don't lift space between your shoulders, just like we do for high plank pose and then chaturanga. One more inhale here. And as you're ready, shoot or step back. And take your vinyasa. Make your way back. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Deep breath in. And a long breath out. Find Hasta Bandha again. Root through the finger pads. Dome the knuckles. Create a little space underneath your palm. Take an inhale breath. Lift your left leg up. Left knee to left upper arm. Feel free to float it out. Kundanyasana. Inhale. Sweep it back. Cross to the right upper arm again. Kundanyasana A if you have it or any variation. Inhale. Sweep it back up. Bring your knee in toward your chest. And again, Hastabandha, find that lock of your hands. Dome the back as much as you can. Round your spine, forehead to knee. Press down. Look forward. Step your left foot through between your thumbs. Back heel spins down. Open it up. Vyogadrasana 2. And start with your fingertips extending forward and back. And then press your hands away from each other like you're pressing into two walls. Bend your left knee a lot. Let it track right over the ankle toward the baby toe. Outer left hip tucking under, inner right thigh rolling open. And now push your fingers toward your body. Press the back of your hands away from you. Take a deep breath in and a long breath out. Beautiful. Extend your fingers. Inhale. Exhale. Viparita Virabhadrasana. Flip your left palm up, take it up and back, just for a breath. Exhale here. Inhale back through center. Find Utita Parsvo Konasana, extended side angle pose. Tucking your outer left hip underneath you, inner right thigh rolling open. Spin your pinky finger down. Maybe you take your left fingertips down onto a block or the mat. And try to go for a bind, even if you need to use some support like a strap. Right hand comes to the sacrum, roll your chest open and create some openness in the shoulders here. Left arm underneath the left thigh. Maybe you find your wrist or the strap or your fingers. Keep tucking your outer left hip underneath you. Use the strong foundation of your feet, roll your inner right thigh open. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. Look down to your mat, rise all the way back up. Virabhadrasana 2. And straighten your front leg. Heel toe your back foot in just a little bit. Shorten your stance. Inhale, start to hinge forward over your front thigh. And then find Trikonasana, triangle pose. So both legs straight. Same orientation of the hips. Left hip tucking under, inner right thigh rolling open. And let's start to add in the core. Sweep your top arm over your ear. You have to draw the thigh bone up into the hip socket. And magnetize your left palm towards your right like you're pressing into a ball. Take a deep breath in, long breath out. One more deep breath in and out. Right hand to right hip, soften your left knee. Feel free to bring a block for underneath your left hand as you raise the right leg up and keep it straight. Press out through your heel. Maybe your left fingertips float. Maybe your right arm reaches up. Feel free to use blocks to make any pose accessible. Really extend through your arms if you can. Shapasana if it's there for you. Beautiful. Soften your left knee. Bring both hands to the mat again. And we'll work again for some hops to handstand. So you'll press down into your palms. Lift your left heel as high as you can and start to swing that right leg up and down. And you might stay right there, just pressing into that hand. Find Hastabandha. Or maybe you come to a wall, rock high on the left toes and use the momentum of your right leg to help lift you up. So press into the hands to keep it light. Maybe you can move your legs away from the wall. Keep pressing into your hands, hollow out the front body. A couple more hops, maybe you find stillness. When you're ready, come back to standing out shape pose on your mat if you're not there. Right knee comes in toward the chest. Extend all the way up. Hands to your hips. Open up your knee to the side. And cross your foot over. Hands to your heart. 
You can inhale, exhale, sit back and down. You can see all these little movements that we do in every pose are all the components of every pose. Just working with the hands, working with the legs and the feet, all contribute the simplicity of handstand. People are afraid to go upside down and yet we're doing all these things already. A Kapadagalavasana, if you have it, deep breath in, long breath out. And hold for a couple extra breaths if you like. And slowly start to come all the way back up, reach up and step down. Chair pose again, big toes touching, heels apart, sit into your chair. Now here we'll work handstand again. So come high on your toes, lift your left leg up to the sky and start to walk forward. And again, maybe you can turn to the wall or try to do just a couple light hops and see if you can bend your right knee 90 degrees. Make a four shape with your right leg and your left leg. Dome the hands. Let's switch sides. You might be at a wall, no problem. Come behind the toes. Beautiful. Make your way back to downward dog or take a vinyasa. All the way back, Adho Mukha, Svanasana. And just take a moment here, lower your knees, hips to heels, forehead down, put the back of your hands on the mat, let your shoulders release. So the Sanskrit name for handstand, Adho Vrikshasana, downward facing tree pose. So we're going to practice that pose one more time, either on the mat or at your wall or however you set, your, you set yourself up. And think of tree pose. So we're going to take tree pose first. And then downward facing tree pose and see if you can bring in that same foundation of the arms pressing either up for tree pose or down into the earth for handstand in the same strength of the legs. Make your way back to downward dog. Deep full breath in. Long full breath out. And slowly start to walk, step or hop forward. Halfway lift, exhale, fold. Inhale to rise all the way up. Magnetize your palms, press them into each other, arch back, hands to heart center. So this tree pose might look a little different than other tree poses that you've done. But see if you can get that same idea of what are the components, these simple components of something like tree pose, which many people do all the time, and yet they're the same components really for the handstand. Start with your hands at your hips. We'll start standing on the right leg with your left knee up. Open it to the side and place your left foot inside of your right thigh. So in this pose we have one leg really strong but you can create that strength in the lower body by pressing your foot and leg together just like we do Hasta Bandha. Now you have Pada Bandha so you're locking your left foot to your right leg. And then from here press your palms straight up to the ceiling as if you were going to press the ceiling away from you and hollow out the front body. And that's the position that we want for handstand. Take a deep, full inhale here. Full exhale. Beautiful. Now keep that idea of pressing up and hollowing out the front body. Come back to the mat and take downward dog. Or come back to the wall and take downward dog. It's okay if you're on your mat as well. Now walk in a little closer, hollow out the front body, lift your left leg up in the sky, come high on your toes, press into your finger pads, and see how much strength and buoyancy you have when you hollow out the front body and rock forward onto those strong hands. Like you could float without maybe even having to touch down. Try it again. Hollow out the front body into your strong hands, create strong arms. Just try to find that nice floating variation. And when you're ready, come back to your mat and just take your hands together. Make a couple figure eights. 
with your wrists. Do beautiful work today, everyone. Press the back of your hands toward each other, elbows out wide, and try to lift your hands up. Give them a good shake. All right, let's try the other side. This time we'll stand on our left leg. Right knee lifts up, out to the side. Find Pada Bandha here. So lock your right foot anywhere along your left leg. Find Hasta Bandha here. Hands to your heart. Lift your sternum. Been here before. And now take your hands and press them up toward the ceiling. And see if you can hollow out the front body. So knit your lower ribs in. Press your hands up. Let the shoulders relax. Get your arms as straight as you can. And it's this same pressing up that we want in the handstand. Beautiful hands come back in. And let's make our way to the wall, or you can do it on your mat as well. Find downward dog. And then walk your feet in a little bit. Lift your right leg up, and now I want you to walk forward, shoulders over your wrists, and hollow out the front body the best you can. Look forward, press into your strong fingers, and find that buoyancy. And you'll find when you have that same buoyancy, that front body hollow, that you can hop up a few times and get that little float. So give it a try, don't be afraid. It's always same components, just put together in a slightly different way. Play with it for maybe one more breath or two and then come back to the front of your mat. So amazing that everyone, I hope is giving this a try wherever you are located. <laughs> a little dog needing attention here in front of me. Beautiful. Okay, let's take a vinyasa. Inhale, reach your arms up to the sky. Press your palms together. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway lengthen. As you exhale, plant your palms. See if you can get a little float. Make your way back to Chaturanga. With your back bent. Chaturanga, press the earth away from you. Your hands are so strong. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Step your big toes together to touch. Ripple forward, high plank pose. And we'll start with the left side. Bring your left hand forward, roll to the outer blade of your left foot. Reach your right arm up, Vashisthasana. You're welcome to lower your bottom knee or step your top foot in front. Stay here or come with me. Take tree pose again. The same shape that we've already done. Reach your right arm up, press into your left hand and feel the strength as you reach up to the sky. Take another deep breath in here. See if you can press the sole of your left foot into the mat. Now keep that tree shape. Come forward, high plank pose, chaturanga. Both feet down, take your back bend. Adho Mukha Svanasana, go through chaturanga if you like. Deep breath in and a long breath out. Step your big toes together to touch. Ripple forward, high plank pose. This time right hand comes forward, roll to the outer right foot. Reach your left arm up. You can always take a variation with your legs if you like. Or find tree pose, rikshasana. Reach your top arm up over your ear. And find that same strength. Maybe you spread your hands apart just like we're doing for handstands. Try to press the sole of your right foot into the mat. Lift your hips high. Now keep that tree shape. Come forward, high plank pose. Chaturanga in tree. Both feet down, vinyasa. All the way back, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Now that we have such strong hands and strong arms and a strong core, we can use that as the foundation to hop through and try, we're gonna hop through three times. See if you can get that same lift as you did in handstand. And as the hips come up, straighten the legs in the air. So let's try that a few times, not coming through yet, but just bend your knees, straighten your legs in the air. And now we're gonna use that same lift and straightening of the legs and try to guide the straight legs all the way through. So keep that foundation of handstand, don't let go. Keep the fingers strong, keep the arm bones straight. Hollow out the front body and scoop your feet instead of up to the sky, all the 
away underneath you and land onto your bum. So same simple part put together in a new way. If you're not sure, you can take a look. And all the way down onto the bum. Roll over your toes, downward dog again. Jump through again, press into your hands. Lift the hips up, straighten your legs and hop through. All the way down. One more time, <laughs> maybe start a little further back on your mat. Last time, hopping through. So this is all of the same component. Hastabandha, come high your toes, hollow out the front body, look where you want to land. And land all the way down on your bum. Beautiful work. Bring your feet to the top of your mat. Bring your hips close to your heels. Reach your arms forward. Take a full breath in here. And as you exhale, lower all the way, all the way, all the way down onto your back. Hug your knees into your chest. Take a few rocks side to side. Have a back bend, a couple of back bends here. Bring your feet underneath your knees, hip distance apart. Bring your hands down beside your body and don't let your feet be any wider than the width of your hands and your hands are hugged in tight to your hips. Draw the center of the shoulder blades together so you puff up your chest just a little bit. We'll start with Satubandha Sarvagasana, root through the feet. As you inhale, start to lift your hips up and if you have Urdhva Dhanurasana in your practice and you want to go there, feel free. Squeeze the inner thighs, lift your hips a little higher and maybe take an interlace of the palms. Grip the fingers tight, knuckles towards your heels. Keep hugging the knees inward. Squeeze the shoulder blades. <clears throat> Chin in toward the chest. One more breath. Release your hands, lift your hips a little higher for one breath in. And then lower all the way down. Lift up your hips and slide your palms underneath your hips. Bring your knees in toward your chest and we rock up a little bit side to side. It's a nice release for the wrists and the hands. And then let the soles of the feet come together, knees out wide. Take a full breath in. Come back to your intention, sweet set one or your meditation. This practice can seem so overwhelming and complicated, and yet it's so very simple, broken down into only a few different types of shapes, a few different types of poses, so many combinations. You can master the simple form of every pose. You have so many possibilities. All right, close your knees together. Again, hip distance apart, feet are flat on the mat. If you want, little bridge pose again, or press your palms up to the ceiling as if you were standing on your hands, just like we've been doing, Urdhva Dhanurasana. And if you've been afraid of Urdhva Dhanurasana, now you're very warmed up. Bend your elbows, bring your hands beside your ears. And if you're new to Urdhva Dhanurasana, first come onto the crown of the head and maybe just stay there for a few breaths and lower down. If you're in little bridge pose, you'll start to lift your hips. If you're in Urdhva Dhanurasana, also lift your hips. Come onto the crown of the head for Urdhva Dhanurasana. Interlace your palms for a little bridge. Maybe stay here if you're new to this and get the feeling of pressing into your hands and see what happens. You feel more buoyant. Or maybe widen your hands a little bit, press into your feet and get a full arch of the spine as you try to straighten your arms and legs, just like you were going into a handstand. Take a few deep breaths here. See if you can straighten your arm bones even more, gazing back toward your toes. When you're ready to come down onto the crown lightly for Urdhva Dhanurasana, if you're a little bridge, release your hands, lift up the hips a little higher, and then come all the way down. And again, you can lift up your hips, place your hands underneath, take your feet wide, knees together, and then windshield wiper your knees side to side. Massage out the wrist bones a little bit. Okay. 
and then let your knees drop all the way to the right side. You can release your hands, cactus your arms, place your right ankle on top of your left knee and walk your left knee more to the left. Take your gaze over your left shoulder, taking a full Ujjayi breath in and a full Ujjayi breath out. Bring your gaze back to center, release your top foot. Again, windshield wiper your legs. You can place your hands underneath your hips. Little wrist massage. And then let your knees fall to the left. Take your hands out, cactus your arms. Left ankle on top of your right thigh, outer thigh. Walk your right foot more to the right and turn your gaze over your right shoulder. Take a few deep breaths. Slowly bring your gaze back to center. Take your top foot off. Windshield wiper your legs again, side to side. Back to center. Hug your knees into your chest and start to rock forward and back a few times. And we're going to rock over the crossed ankles and make our way into Chaturanga. So use your strong hands when you're ready. Rock all the way up, cross over your ankles, Shoot back. Take your vinyasa, make your way to Adamukha Svanasana, Hastabandha, still there. Adamukha. Take an inhale breath, lift your right leg up to the sky, start to stack your hip, bend your knee, open up your chest. And as you exhale, come through for Ekapada Raja Kapotasana, Pigeon Pose. Slide your right knee behind your right wrist. Your left hand is in the same line as your right, but your right toes might be further back. Feel free to stay here. If you want to let that shin bone come more forward, you can. If you are more open, maybe you swing your left shin bone on top of your right and stack them together and then fold forward. A single or double pigeon. Or any variations that you like. If you're folded forward, something that I like to do is to bring blocks on the highest height, they can be any height underneath the elbows, shoulder distance apart. Thumbs to the nape of the neck and melt the heart down. Here in double pigeon, sweep your left leg back behind you. Come up to your hands, tuck your back toes, three-legged dog. Take it all the way back and up and press into your strong hands. It'll keep just your left hand on the mat. Turn your left fingertips out. De-weight your right hand and flip it over. Wild thing or Urdhva Dhanurasana, if you have that in your practice. So pressing into the hands, create Hastabandha, especially with your left hand. Use that strong foundation, come all the way back, three like a dog. Take last, oh well, second last vinyasa. We'll do one on the other side as well. Inhale, left leg lifts to the sky. Start to stack your hip, open it up. And as you exhale, bring your left knee behind your left wrist, Ekapada Raja Kapotasan. Your right hand is in the same line as your left hand. Your Left foot is further back than your knee, or you can bring it more forward. Bring your shin bone more parallel, or swing that right leg around and stack your right shin bone over top of your left. Try to keep your feet active. Double pigeon in either variation, you can fold. Maybe you try that variation with the blocks under the elbows, shoulder distance apart. Variation of Anahatasana, heart melting. 
This is a really nice release for the underarms, for the triceps especially. Do a lot of vinyasas. <laughs> If you're in double pigeon, you rise up, swing your right leg back behind you. Everybody come up onto your hands. Tuck your back toes, sweep your left leg back and up, three-legged dog, and let's open it up again. Use your strong hand, just like we do in handstand, but just your right hand stays connected. Do you weight your left palm? Tip yourself over. Wild thing, or you can bring your feet parallel and hip distance. Urdhva Dhanurasana, press into your right hand, keep opening up, and use Hasta Bandha, turn yourself back around, three-legged dog, Vinyasa. And now that your hands and arms are so strong and your core is so activated, one last chance to jump through to seated, and if you want to go take a little handstand at the wall a couple of times, you can. And then make your way onto your seat. Try to go straight legs. You can walk your feet in a little closer if it helps. And come all the way down. Keep your legs straight out in front of you. Move the flesh around your seat from side to side. And imagine again that you're going into handstand. Press your hands up toward the ceiling and knit the lower ribs in. So hollow out the front body. Take an inhale breath here and as you exhale, Hinge forward, try to keep your arms and legs straight. And then relax your arms, relax your forehead down. Soften your knees as you need. Paschimottanasana, five breaths. Slowly rise up, keep your legs straight, reach forward, strong core, roll all the way down onto your back, keep pressing your heels forward, keep the core strong, hollow out the front body as you come down, and when you get there, hug your right knee in towards your chest, and keep your left leg long or bend your knee, and stay right here if you like, Pavana Muttasana. Squeezing the knee out and around your rib cage and toward the right shoulder. Or take half happy baby, bend your knee. Wrap your left hand around the outer, sorry, your right hand around the outer right foot and actively press the back of your left thigh down if your leg is straight. Feel free to stay here or extend your leg. Take a few deep breaths. You can always use a strap as well. Come back through center, release your legs straight, hug your left knee in toward your chest, Pavana Muttasana. Keep your right leg active, heel pressing out, toes curl towards you or bend your right knee. You're welcome to stay here or half happy baby. Left hand wrapping around the outer left foot, drawing the knee down and actively press your right thigh down if you like. If your leg is straight, maybe straighten your left leg. Bring both knees back in, give yourself a nice squeeze. If there's any last posture that you would like to do before Shavasana, maybe a mild inversion, Vipravita Karate, maybe full happy baby, maybe even plow, shoulder stand or head stand. Wherever you would like to go, I would take about 10 to 20 more deep breaths. If you're going for a head stand, you can go to the wall if you like. It's Easy mat or stay on your mat, plow or shoulder stand, kicking your feet, knees and hips over your head as you lie on your back. Try to keep your chin in the center. 
You're going for Shirshasana A. Use the strong foundation of your forearms and palms. Keep your hands tightly interlaced. Find Hasta Bandha. Ready to complete your pose when you're ready. You can take your time. Maybe take a few breaths in child pose if you've been in headstand or sit up like I'm doing. If you've been in plow pose or shoulder stand, just take a few breaths lying onto your back. Maybe fish pose, matsyasana. If you're ready to lay yourself down gently into savasana, mind this intention that we had today of simplicity. Simplicity does not necessarily require renunciation. It can be as basic as breaking down life's complications into smaller, more tasty, and enjoyable bites. And I hope that you found bringing together all these simple components to be able to access something like a handstand enjoyable. I hope you keep up your yoga practice, and thank you so much for joining me. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Namaste.